Kitchen. Hey, Gizmo here. I'm out with my buddy Jason. Filming Barry. Yeah. <laughs> We're heading out to Light Lane Road Bush Camp on this trip. That's my buddy Jason. And you can catch his channel just here. Uh, we're in for a bit of night of adventure, just camping overnight in the bush, in the cold, in the, um, is it almost winter? Nearly winter. Yeah. Nearly winter. And sweet. there's a bit of a chill in the air today, so it's going to be cold. While we're out on the trail, I'm going to show you some uh, knots. So this video is all about tying knots. See you at camp. Like I said, uh, this trip is going to be all about tying knots. When we get to camp, we get set up, I'll show you that, and then I'll get in to show you some of the knots that I use on the trail. So we're going to dedicate this video to tying knots and set up camp now. So let's get in a few knots. And you see me here doing a lot of climbing and adventuring in a bush and I always use specific knots for doing different types of things. And I know there's heaps and heaps of different types of knots but most of the knots that I particularly stick with are climbing knots. And the reason for that is because they're designed for climbing. They're not designed for fishing. They're not designed for bushcraft. They're actually designed for climbing. So if I have to learn a knot and I'm suspended from a cliff, I want it to be a specific climbing knot rather than just a fishing knot or a bushcraft knot. The climbing knots have been specifically designed and tested to withstand the rigors of climbing. So that's why I try and learn and remember climbing knots rather than just any other sort of a knot. Um, some of the knots are interchangeable, like there are fishing knots in climbing and there are bushcraft knots in climbing. Um, so I'll just go over a few knots that you use in the bush and probably the very first one I'll show you is a very simple knot. It's just called an overhand knot and everyone knows that. They probably used that at school. Probably wasn't the first knot you ever learnt. It's just a simple round turn, poke the knot through the hole and that's called an overhand knot. Um, it's fairly dangerous if you tie it close to the end of the knot and that's what you're going to use. Say you tied that at the end of your rappel so you don't rappel off the end and you get to the end and then suddenly you slide that knot and it continues off. It's quite safe if you put a big long tail on it. So now it's got a big long tail. It's going to take a long time for that to work its way right off into the end of that. So that's um, just another little thing to keep in mind. I don't use that knot very often when I'm tying on the end. I'll use a knot called a stopper knot. It's around twice and then back through itself and it causes a big chunkier knot on the end there and that's less likely to slip and come undone. So that's called a stopper knot. And a little variation on the overhand knot it's called a figure eight. So what I've done, I've went over and gone through and made an overhand knot. The figure eight is, I go over, I just go over again and then go through, which forms a knot that looks like a figure of eight. 
So see that, that just looks like the um, figure of eight. That's called a figure of eight knot. And it's used quite extensively in climbing figure of eight knot. Probably not in this particular configuration, but that's called the figure of eight. So we started with an overhand, and then we moved on to a figure of eight, which was just over and over again. It makes a figure of eight. That's a figure of eight knot. Pretty odd with this hat on. I'm going to swap my hats. I'll be back. Now you've probably got knots that you use and practice all the time, and that's probably a good thing for you if you're doing bushcraft and fishing. But when you're climbing, like I said, I need knots that are going to um, actually save me in a fall. And the other thing about a lot of the climbing knots is they once they're tied, they're easy to untie as well. So if you fall on a knot from a height, it's going to cinch that knot up really tight. Well, I've got a specified climbing knot undoes a bit easier than some of the other knots. So that's why we use them. There's also different types of rope for climbing and rappelling. There's static and dynamic rope. Now, what does that mean? Well, static means exactly that. It stays still or it doesn't stretch, it doesn't move. It stays still, it's a solid piece of rope. It doesn't stretch. It's perfect for doing rappelling because you don't want that rope to stretch. You want it to continue down. And when you've tried both rappelling ropes, they're static and dynamic on rappelling, there's a big, huge difference between the two. And uh, the reason why you use static is because it's a lot better to rappel on. So why do you use dynamic rope? Well, dynamic rope's like a giant elastic band, and when you're climbing, if you happen to fall, when you get to the end of the dynamic rope, boom, it stretches like an elastic band, and it absorbs some of the impact of the fall. Um, so when you're climbing, you've got a good chance of falling. When you're rappelling, there's less chance of falling because you're already attached to the rope and you're going down, you've got less chance of falling. But when you're actually climbing, you want a different type of rope, it's going to absorb some of that impact when you fall. So that's called a dynamic rope and it stretches. It's a dynamic rope. So I went, when I use rappelling, I mainly use static rope. When I climb, I mainly use dynamic rope. So I showed you an overhand knot and I showed you the figure of eight knot. And one of the knots that I use extensively in climbing is called a figure eight on a bite. And if you don't know what a bite is, a bite in a rope is just when you get the rope and you fold it over and you have a loop. They call that a bite. That's a bite of rope. And to tie a figure eight on a bite is pretty much just the same knot, only you've got a double length of rope. So you go around, tie it through and back through like that. That's a figure eight on a bite. So I've just doubled the rope up and it has a little tail hanging down and on that little tail I can tie a stopper knot on there to stop it fraying off the end. It's a fairly good knot and it's a fairly safe knot. It's very easy to untie and it's one that I use a real lot in climbing. It's called figure eight on a bite. Now, say I had a loop on my jeans. Say my jeans have got a loop here and I wanted to connect to my jeans. Well, imagine it's a harness with a harness loop and I want to attach to that without using a carabiner or I've dropped my carabiner down a cliff. I need to be able to make a attachment point and I'd like to use the figure of eight but I can't do that because it's got a solid loop. I can't attach a solid loop to a solid loop. There's a way you can tie this onto yourself. Without using the solid loop. The first thing you do is you tie the first figure eight that I showed you. So there's the first figure eight that I showed you. And I'll get my carabiner just as an example of a fixed loop. Pretend this is a solid fixed loop. There we have a fixed loop. I need to attach to that and it doesn't come apart. Pretend it's not a carabiner. Pretend it's like a, a ring or a, a loop in my um, harness. What I need to do is I need to poke that rope through there and then I need to just follow the path of the original rope the same way, just follow where that rope's gone around 
back through exactly the same way and through and then you'll have made that figure of eight on a bite attached to a solid loop. So there's the figure of eight on a bite attached to a solid loop. And that's how you do that. Uh, you, you see these ropes and you see me using them out in the bush. If you want to learn how to do all this I suggest you go and do a rope course and learn these knots. Don't try and push, piece them together from this video. Learn them properly. I'm just going through all the ropes knots that I use when I'm out in the bush and uh, these knots keep me safe. Another knot that has a lot of different names and a lot of different uses depending on what you're using it for is called a slip knot. It's pretty much just a loop and a pull through like that so that's actually the knot but the reason it's called a slip knot is because it slips continues to slip and if you were to use that attached to something boom there's no more knot it's gone it's called a slip knot that's why it's called a slip knot and it's used in um, things like a munter mule and a lot of other things use that there's actually a thing called a um, a bowline which is a um, a fishing knot and a bushcraft knot it's also used in climbing and to tie the bowline um, a simple way is to actually use the uh, slip knot and I'll set the camera up and I'll show you how to do that. I wanted to tie this rope against this tree. You could use a knot called a, a bow line. And an easy way to tie a bow line is just to do a slip knot, which is the knot I just showed you. There's a slip knot. Poke that other tail through there and then you pull it back through. And that makes the bow line. There's a bow line knot to a tree it's a really simple way to make a bow line and it's attached to that tree but the bow line is one of those knots that can actually slip a little bit so I usually tie a stopper knot on the end of it just to make it stable and there's my bow line with the stopper knot attached to the tree now the next thing I'm going to go through is um, the position of the rope when you're using it for climbing you want the rope to follow a path so that the rope is going either in a nice round loop or a perfectly straight line you don't want it to be crossing over anything the reason you don't want it to be crossing over anything is because the rope can chop through itself and that's something we don't want to happen so the next one I'm going to show you is called a munter a munter hitch Now the munter, or the munter hitch as it's called, is um, one of those knots that defies that principle of having the rope either straight or going on a nice round continuation around the flow of the rope. The reason you don't want to do things like that is because it can cause the rope to cross over itself and rope pulling against the rope will actually cause it to break. Um, the munter is used extensively in, cl in climbing and it's an essential knot to learn because it could save your life and the reason it could save your life is because if you lose your descender or something in that range you can actually repel on a munter hitch you can haul gear up with a munter hitch you can do lots of things with it but I for one do not put my life's hands in in charge of the munter hitch because I do not trust it so how do we tie the munter hitch well it's really simple I do it really simply, I just make a twist, stick my thumb through the hole and then throw it back over my thumb. There it is, that's the munter hitch, it's really simple to tie. Now I always tie it that way because I'm right handed. If you are left handed, it's pretty much the same thing, you just throw it over your hand, twist it the other way and then you've got the munter tied in the opposite direction if you're left handed. So depending on right or left hand, it just depends on which way you do the twist in the rope. You can, you can throw it over your hand and then do the twist after or you can throw you can do the twist first and then throw it over your thumb and you do it on a carabiner so you can throw it over the carabiner then twist it 
and then throw it back over the carabiner and it's on the mutter so it's just a that's it that's the mutter hitch I've actually got a rope tutorial video that shows you a lot clearer than this video on how to actually tie these knots um, if you want to check that out the link for that is here but I'm just basically going all over the knots that I use when I'm out on the trail and the munter is one of them and the munter is one of the best ones to keep in your kitty because it could save your life so I could actually rappel down a mountain with that see how it causes friction and goes through the carabiner I can rappel off that I can lower gear off that I can haul gear up with it and do all sorts of stuff munter now a very simple variation of the munter is called a clove hitch well it's a simple variation because of the way that I tie it it's the same way that I tie the munter just a little bit more so what you saw me do with the munter is I twisted it stuck my thumb through there now I just twist it again stick my thumb through there now I've created something called a clove hitch and the clove hitch is the exact opposite of a munter it locks on it doesn't slip when you tie it on something so it stays there no matter what no matter which way you pull on it it locks on so that's a clove hitch and you'll see a lot of people use that tying their um, tarp onto their trailers and stuff like that but it's also used in climbing and to tie it over a, um, a bar on a trailer for instance um, you wouldn't be able to do a loop stick your thumb through it and do another loop because it's a solid bar so there's a way to do that which is very simple as well and I'll set the camera up and show you that now okay so here we have a tree or a log or imagine this is the bar on your on your box trailer um, simple way to tie, tie a clove hitch is just to go around grab it with your thumb go around grab it with your thumb pull it through and then you've got the clove hitch attached to your bar rail and uh, it's a knot that's used in climbing a lot it's a knot that's used to tie onto a trailer as lot, so it's around come over grab with your thumb pull back through come around go over grab with your thumb again pull through there it is and clove hitch so i'm going to go back to the munter hitch and explain about um, rope on rope if i tie the munter hitch and flip it over if you look at that rope when it pulls down it's cutting rope across rope and in climbing that's not a good thing if I was to fall on that it's got the potential for this piece of rope to cut through that piece of rope because it's rope on rope um, when you're tying a knot you don't want that scenario to happen so you want it either to continue around or to continue straight through as an example I'll tie a knot called an alpine butterfly and if I tie a slip knot in the rope, I've made a, a knot in that rope. If I was to attach a carabiner onto this knot, when I go down that slip knot slips and it gets tight and it jams up on that carabiner and it jams up really tight on that carabiner. And it's a good knot, but see how it's all jammed up. But I don't want it to jam up. I want it to be a loop sticking out and so that I can have it not jam. So I'll use one called the Alpine Butterfly. Pretty much just this is a this is one way of tying it. Twist it, twist it again. You have a hole through there. You got to bring that hole right back up and poke it through that hole. And it forms a knot called an Alpine Butterfly. Now. The reason I tie this is to show you the principle of the rope going straight through. You can see that rope continues down, it winds its way smoothly around all this knot and then continues down in exactly the same path, straight. So if I was to fall on that, it's not putting any stress on the rope, it's just continuing straight down in that path. So I can clip something onto that, I can fall on that knot, I'm not worried about this cinching up and locking on there it's still a good knot and it follows the path of not jamming the rope up and not cutting across the path there's other knots that i show in my um tutorial called the fisherman's bend and the double fisherman's bend and it's a good knot for tying in a loop of rope 
and a lot of times you need to tie a loop of rope and people do it all different ways and a lot of ways are incorrect the same for a reason here I have a, a prussic cord and this is made into a loop but as you can see if you look at that that rope still passes through in that straight direction see there's no cutting across there that rope just passes through in that straight direction so if I was to fall on that it, the rope continues down in that path it's not cutting across I'll show you a good example. Just say for instance I decided, well hang on, I want to tie a loop in this piece of rope. I'm going to tie an overhand knot. So there we go, I've made a loop of rope now and I've tied an overhand knot in it. There it is. What happens is that when you fall on that, I don't know if you can see that, but that rope is pulling into the knot. It wants to jam that knot and tear that knot apart. You see that? If I was to fall on that, there's a good chance that would tear that knot and destroy that piece of rope and me at the same time. <laughs> there is another knot that incorporates a figure of eight and it's called bunny ears and I use that a lot because when I repel I'll repel on a doubled rope it's not a twin rope it's actually a doubled single rope so it's doubled up so I'll repel on a doubled rope and a doubled rope attached to a attach point a double rope attached to an attach point you can imagine you can just slip one way or the other when you're repelling down to both ropes you try and repel down as evenly as possible but there is the potential for one to slip or the other to slip and when you're going into a canyon or something like that and you've got a multiple bunch of people going down a canyon then it's not really a safe way to just everyone repel down on this double rope like that you want to be able to lock those two ropes together so that one can't slip past the other one and it makes it a lot safer and just the very last person going down the rappel would just go down on the double ropes and why do you do that? well that's because when you get down the bottom you want to take the rope with you and continue down that trail you can pull the rope all the way through and then carry on uh, that's the only reason why you rappel on the double rope the other reason I rappel on a double rope is because there's a thing in climbing called redundancy and redundancy means that instead of having one thing you have a backup you always have a backup so everything that I do when I climb is I have a backup and you'll very rarely see me repelling on a single rope you might be seeing me go down steep ravines like here on a single rope when I'm actually repelling I'm actually hanging over and dangling in midair I'll use a doubled rope and the reason for that is part of my redundancy I've got two ropes if one fails I've got another rope now like I said that doesn't work when you've got a rope that can slip through like that it doesn't work as redundant because if one half of that breaks the other half is just going to boom go through so that's not redundant so you need to make it redundant by doing a knot and it's taken me ages to get to this point but uh, you, you do a knot called bunny ears I've done it many other ways. I've used slip knots, I've used alpine butterflies, uh, but now I use the bunny ears because it's just, I find it the easiest thing to do. So, bunny ears is you tie a, you get a bite and you tie a figure of eight. Now, that's what you would normally do to tie a figure of eight. There's just one more step in bunny ears. Is you tie a figure of eight but instead of pulling the whole thing through you actually make another bite with the rope and then pull that loop over the whole lot and what I've made is I've made a figure eight on a bite with two loops that's called bunny ears and bunny ears is really good because now what it's done is it's made that rope independent it's made 
that rope independent. I don't like if that one was to break and I'm attached to both, I'm still attached to one of the ropes. So if I'm rappelling down on both of these strands and one breaks, I'm still on the other one. So that's made it redundant. It's got two anchor points, so I can use two different anchor points. So if one of the anchor points breaks, I'm attached to the other anchor point. Um, that's why it's good. Also, the bunny ears are adjustable, so I can actually make one longer and one shorter. So if I've got one anchor up there and one anchor down there, I've got two separate anchors, two different positions, two different heights. I can adjust it and do that, and you can make these as long as you like. So that um, makes that rope redundant, the twin, the doubled rope redundant. So, there you have it. That's my video on ropes and uh, ropes techniques I use in the bush. Now this video was never intended to be a tutorial. It was intended to show you the techniques I use when I'm out in the bush. If you, however, do want to um, learn proper rope techniques and see some knots, how they're supposed to be tied professionally, I suggest you check out Rich Carlton's um, videos on his website called Canyons and Crags. He is very thorough and very good at explaining these things. So, yeah, check that out. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video on ropes and knots. See you later.